a black heterosexual male um, has possibly um, um, hindered uh, uh, my career. I've said this before. We've all been inappropriately touched in Hollywood, period. It's just, that's what it is. We've all, at some point or another, been inappropriately touched in Hollywood, whether you realize it. So have you noticed how more and more actors are stepping up to spill the tea on this whole blackballing saga in Hollywood? It's like Cat Williams was onto something with that infamous interview where he dropped some major truth bombs about the industry. Since then, it's been like a floodgate has opened with countless celebs coming forward to share their own experiences and offer support. And let's face it, there's been some serious talent sidelined for reasons that just don't add up. And now they're fed up with staying silent about it. The latest name rumored to be ready to spill their side of the story is Darius McCrary. Remember him? He was once a shining star with a future as bright as they come. But as the years passed, it's like his light just kept flickering and fading until he practically vanished from the scene. Now, whispers are swirling that he's gearing up to not only talk about being blackballed, but also spill the beans on why it allegedly happened. So what exactly is his story? Let's get into it. So you remember that bombshell Cat Williams dropped during his No Holds Barred Club Shay Shay interview, right? Well, it looks like Darius McCrary might just be backing him up with even more jaw-dropping revelations about the dark side of Hollywood. In a latest explosive interview, Darius spilled some serious tea, claiming that pretty much everyone in Tinseltown, regardless of gender, has experienced some form of inappropriate touching. According to him, it's just par for the course in Hollywood, whether folks realize it or not. He said, I've said this before, we've all been inappropriately touched in Hollywood. It's just what it is. We have all been inappropriately touched in Hollywood, whether the audience realizes it or not. I've said this before, we've all been inappropriately touched in Hollywood, period. It's just, that's what it is. We've all, at some point or another, Another been inappropriately touched in Hollywood, whether you realize it or not. During Cat Williams Club Shay Shay interview, Cat nearly broke the internet by saying that Hollywood men are G by high level executives in Hollywood and then forced into participating in gay activities to get ahead in the business. Now, here's where it gets even more intriguing. Rumor has it that Darius might have been living that very story. Some speculate that perhaps he refused to play by the rules set by those powerful figures. And that's why his career seemingly hit the skids after his stint on Family Matters. It's like he went from the top of the world to rock bottom in the blink of an eye. So, Eddie Winslow on Family Matters made waves on the young and the restless. But despite his success in the spotlight, his bank account's been on a roller coaster ride. Picture this. Family Matters running for nine epic seasons, over 200 episodes of pure sitcom gold. That's where Darius made his mark, becoming a household name. And let's not forget his stint on The Young and the Restless, adding more fame to his resume. But here's the kicker. Despite all the glitz and glamour, Darius has faced some serious money woes. Like we're talking about staring down the barrel of a $90,000 debt to the IRS kind of trouble. It got so bad that he had to crash with family just to keep his head above water. And get this, when he hit up the courtroom in November 2017, he laid it all bare. The guy was scraping by on gigs that barely paid enough to cover his daily coffee fix. He was hustling hard, but the paychecks were laughably small. Think $125 a day for a week-long shoot. Further financial hardships surfaced in a 2019 court filing, when McCrary claimed to have earned a mere $500 in the preceding year. Yeah, that's the kind of reality check that'll make your jaw drop. It's like peeking behind the curtain of fame and seeing the struggles that come with it. Fast forward to December 2023, and things took another nosedive. Darius found himself in cuffs over unpaid child support, staring down a whopping $53,000 debt. That's no small change, especially when he's supposed to be shelling out $1,300 a month to support his kiddo. Also, McCrary found himself in a bit of a typecasting maze. The whole Eddie Winslow thing was a blessing and a curse. While it made him a star, breaking out of that mold proved trickier than a Rubik's Cube. Casting directors and fans alike couldn't unsee him as the Winslow kid, making it a challenge to land roles that showed off his full range. And you guessed it, this typecasting struggle is a classic Hollywood tale. Many actors grapple with breaking free from their iconic roles, and McCrary was no exception. Post Family Matters, he tried to mix things up hopping into various TV and movie projects. But let's be real, none quite match the Eddie Winslow fame. This whole journey shines a spotlight on a bigger issue, especially for those who hit the fame jackpot as kids. Navigating the transition to more grown-up roles is like trying to find your way out of a maze blindfolded. McCrary's story mirrors the challenges many actors face in evolving beyond their past characters. Also flashback to the interview when Darius got real about being a black man in Hollywood. In an interview, he peeled back the curtain on the challenges he's faced, hinting 
hinting that maybe his identity has put a few roadblocks in his career path. But he's not one to play the blame game. He's all about breaking stereotypes and embracing every role, whether it's playing a straight dude or stepping into the shoes of a gay character on anger management. A black head of a male um, has possibly um, um, hindered uh, uh, my career to a degree. Even with all the positivity he's putting out there, it's clear Darius isn't the only one facing these uphill battles. There's a whole crew of talented actors feeling the sting of being sidelined in Hollywood. Let's do a quick dive in. First up is Jussie Smollett, and man, it's a roller coaster ride in Hollywood. You probably remember him from Empire, where he played Jamal Lyon. Groundbreaking stuff, really. Being an openly gay black dude on TV. He was getting major props for breaking barriers and his acting chops. But hold up, the plot takes a wild turn. In January 2019, Jussie reported being the victim of a hate crime in Chicago. Now that made headlines real quick. At first, folks were rallying behind him, showing love and support. But then, the whole story started looking fishy. Details started popping up. Up, suggesting that maybe, just maybe, he orchestrated the whole thing himself. And bam, the tide turned. Public opinion did a 180, and suddenly, Jussie went from victim to suspect. Media went nuts, and the dude faced some serious legal heat. We're talking a 16-count indictment for allegedly filing a false police report. The legal saga had more twists than a soap opera. Charges dropped, then reinstated with a new indictment. You are fined $25,000, which is the maximum fine and you will spend the first 150 days of your sentence in the Cook County Jail. And that will start today. This whole mess not only put a dent in Jussie's personal rep, but also threw a massive question mark on his Hollywood future. Empire wrote him out of the final episode, and his next moves in the industry became a big old question mark. Now let's talk Wesley Snipe, the dude who rocked the 90s with his K roles in New Jack City, White Men Can't Jump, and that Blade trilogy. I mean, the guy's got range, charisma, and a unique vibe on screen. But hold on, his Hollywood journey hit a major speed bump. So picture this, early 2000s, and Wesley's in the middle of a high-profile tax evasion case. Legal battles ensued, and it wasn't some quick skirmish. We're talking lengthy and complex. The climax? Wesley got convicted for willfully dodging those federal income tax returns. In 2010, he kicked off a three-year prison stint. Talk about a plot twist, right? His time behind bars marked a serious timeout from the acting scene and the public eye. Suddenly, the buzz wasn't about his K performances, but about the legal drama overshadowing his career. It goes to show how fame can get shaky real quick, especially when off-screen stuff takes the spot. Spotlight. Fast forward to his release, and Wesley tried to get back in the game. He showed up in films like The Expendables 3 and Coming to America, a comeback attempt, no doubt. But let's be real, it wasn't the full-on return to glory he probably hoped for. Hollywood can be a tricky beast, and Wesley Snipes learned that the hard way. All right, let's talk about the man, the myth, the legend, Will Smith. Now, we all know his Hollywood journey is like a blockbuster movie in itself. Fresh Prince of Bel-Air in the 90s, absolute classic. Then he owned the big screen with Independence Day, Men in Black, you name it. Basically, the dude was on fire. But hold on to your seats because 2022 at the Academy Awards was a whole different plot twist. Picture this. Live on TV, Will Smith goes full-on confrontation mode and slaps comedian Chris Rock on stage. Why? Well, Chris cracked a joke about Will's wife, Jada Pinkett Smith. Instant shockwaves and the whole world's jaws dropped. <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. Will Smith just smacked the sh the aftermath? Massive. Will faced a tidal wave of criticism for the slap, seen as uncool and a hit to his squeaky clean image. He even resigned from the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences and got banned from their events for a solid decade. The guy who's been the poster child of positivity suddenly found himself in the middle of a controversy that had everyone questioning his judgment and professionalism. Fast forward, he said sorry to Chris Rock and some folks think he'll bounce back just fine. I mean, it's Will Smith we're talking about. Next up is Isaiah Washington. You know him from Grey's Anatomy, playing the suave doctor Preston Burke, a role that put him on the map as a top-notch performer. But buckle up, because his Hollywood ride gets bumpy real quick. There's this incident that totally flips the script on Washington's career vibe. It all kicks off when he drops a not-so-cool homophobic slur on the Grey's Anatomy set. Suddenly, it's the talk of the town, everyone's buzzing about it. And let me tell you, the industry all gung-ho about inclusivity and being respectful wasn't having it. They threw some serious shade at Washington, and the backlash was like a Hollywood storm. In 2007, when you left Grey's Anatomy, there was so much conversation around your departure because you had allegedly made a homophobic 
comment about your former co-star. The aftermath hits, and Grey's Anatomy slams the door on renewing Washington's contract. This whole episode becomes a real-life soap opera, highlighting the crazy dance between personal beliefs, public antics, and the gigs that make or break a career. Despite Washington owning up to his slip-up and giving a public apology, the incident becomes this looming cloud over his career. Fast forward post Grey's Anatomy, and snagging roles of the same spotlight magnitude becomes a bit of a mission impossible for him. It's like the Hollywood gods decided to make him jump through hoops to reclaim his spot in the limelight. Next is Columbus Short, the guy who danced his way into our hearts and stomped the yard in K-It as Harrison Wright on Scandal. I mean, the dude had charisma for days, and we were all thinking he's on the fast track to Hollywood greatness. But hold up, here comes the plot twist. Life off screen for Columbus Short turned into a wild drama. Reports of domestic issues and a bit of a substance use situation started making headlines. Suddenly, his personal life was overshadowing his red carpet moments. In 2014, he dropped the bomb. He was bouncing from Scandal, a show that was not only a fan favorite but also a critical and commercial hit. Leaving Scandal wasn't just saying goodbye to a steady paycheck, it was like waving farewell to a major platform that had him on Hollywood's radar. And you know how it goes? When the spotlight dims, it's tough to snag those sweet roles. Suddenly, the offers weren't pouring in like before, and his Hollywood presence started fading faster than last year's fashion trends. But don't hit pause just yet. Columbus Short, ever the comeback kid, decided to face the music. He took some time off to sort out his personal stuff and make a Hollywood comeback. Life's a journey, right? Let's see where Columbus's Hollywood story goes next. It is bittersweet, man. That is exactly the way to call it. I think it's bittersweet. But I did love what I did on Scandal, you know what I mean? And then here's Monique. Yep, the Oscar-winning actress is supposedly one of those who didn't toe the line that Hollywood wanted. Monique spent over a decade calling out Lee Daniels, OPR Winfrey, and Tyler Perry, claiming they worked together to blackball her for not doing promotional press for the 2009 film Precious. The real beef kicked off when OPR and Tyler decided Monique should hit the press circuit for the film without any paycheck. Monique wasn't having it and straight up said, nah, not in my contract. According to Monique, she only got a measly 50 k for the whole movie, which was barely enough. Now they wanted her to jet around the world promoting the film for free, not on Monique's watch. But Oprah and Tyler didn't take her refusal well at all. Instead, they started trashing her reputation in the industry, spinning a narrative about her being difficult to work with. Monique spilled the tea, saying Tyler Perry told her, You may want to consider promoting this film because if you get nominated for an Oscar, your next film is three to five million dollars. And if you win it, your next film is six to eight million dollars. Monique was like, Hold up, I'm a black woman. Where are they paying? those salaries, brother? She straight up told Tyler, I can't work for free. I've done what I was supposed to do. I can't go overseas and do this for free. Their back and forth continued, with Tyler saying he doesn't believe in giving money away for free, and Monique firing back, I don't believe in working for free. So we on the same page? It's a classic case of clash in values, and Monique wasn't backing down. He goes on about his spill, you know. I said, well, listen, you can write me the check for me to go overseas. I don't care where the money comes from, but I'm not gonna do it for free. He says, well, I don't believe in giving money away for free. I said, I don't believe in working for free, so we on the same page. She also claimed Tyler Perry allegedly went the extra mile to mess with her acting gigs. According to Monique, it all went down after she turned down a request to fly to France for the Cannes Film Festival, tied to promoting the movie Precious. So, check it. The movie studio initially asked her to jet off to France, but Monique, with her busy schedule as a talk show host, comedian, and family woman, respectfully declined. They tried to sweeten the deal by offering to upgrade her hotel room, but she and her husband stuck to their guns saying, nah, we're gonna spend this time with our family. When the third call came and they asked, what's it gonna take to get Monique to France? Her husband straight up asked, is there a number associated with it? That's when they dropped the bomb that they would never pay for anyone to do promotions for a movie. Monique revealed she was paid a mere $50,000 for Precious, and it wasn't about the money, she signed up to do it with her friend. The interviewer dug in, suggesting she needed the money to feed her family and pay bills, and Monique responded, I think that's what America says. We all say, I can't do it for free. She explained that when the movie studio refused to pay for her Cannes appearance, they didn't make a fuss. But then the reports started flying, painting Monique as demanding and difficult. The whole thing boiled down to a simple request that they understood couldn't be met. But suddenly Monique found herself labeled, and that's where the drama kicked in. Said we understood, because what people didn't know was, I was paid $50,000 to do the movie Precious. And it really wasn't about the money, and I'm not complaining because I signed up to do it with my friend. Says we can't set a precedent and pay you to do this 
we didn't have an issue with them. Okay. But that's when the reports came that now Monique is being demanding and she's being difficult. Monique's even called out OPR and Tyler Perry, asking for an apology that, as far as we know, is still MIA. Next up on the list, we've got Stacey Dash. You might remember her from the 90s classic, Clueless, where she rocked the role of Dion. She was basically a household name back then, but hold on to your hats because her journey in Hollywood took some wild turns. After her early fame, Stacey decided to shake things up big time. Instead of sticking to the usual Hollywood script, she took a detour into the world of political commentary. Yep. You you heard that right. The girl from Clueless turned into a political commentator. And let me tell you, it wasn't just a career shift. It was like dropping a bomb in the middle of Tinseltown. Stacy went all in with her conservative views, especially when it came to giving Barack Obama a piece of her mind and taking stances on hot button social issues. Now here's the kicker. Hollywood tends to lean left, but Stacy was out here swimming against the stream with her outspoken conservative beliefs. You can imagine the kind of storm that stirred up. Her appearances on news networks and social media ran turned into major talking points. I'm talking about heated debates, intense backlash, the whole shebang. In an industry where your personal beliefs can make or break you, Stacey Dash definitely didn't shy away from going against the grain. Her political stance didn't just put her on a different page. It practically put her at odds with a bunch of her peers and the whole Hollywood crew. Period. That's it. Are you saying there shouldn't be a Black History Month because there isn't a White History Month? Exactly. Now let's take a trip down memory lane and check out what Darius McCrary was up to before things hit a rough patch. Darius McCrary, born on May 1, 1976, comes from Walnut, California. While we don't know much about his mom, his dad, Howard McCrary, is quite the talent. He's a composer, singer, and music director. Growing up, Darius got a lot of encouragement from his dad to dive into showbiz. Plus, he's got a younger brother named Donovan. With such a musically inclined family, it's no wonder Darius felt drawn to the entertainment world from an early age. Darius's journey in showbiz kicked off when he was just 11 years old. He made his big screen debut in 1987's Big Shots, showing off his talent and versatility. From there, he quickly found his way onto the small screen, appearing in popular shows like Amen and Hooperman. And let's not forget his role in the 1988 film Mississippi Burning. It was clear he had some serious acting chops even then. But it was 1989 that marked a major turning point for Darius. That's when he landed the role of Eddie Winslow in the iconic sitcom Family Matters. You know, the show that kept us all laughing for nine whole seasons? Yeah, that one. Family Matters wasn't just a hit. It was a cultural phenomenon, earning praise from both fans and critics alike. And Darius's portrayal of Eddie Winslow played a big part in its success. Throughout the show's run, he racked up three Young Artist Award nominations, proving he was a rising star in the industry. After bidding farewell to Family Matters in 1998, Darius McCrary didn't slow down one bit in the entertainment world. He kept on making waves, taking on diverse roles that showcased his talent and versatility. One notable gig was snagging the lead role in Something to Sing About, a Christian drama produced by the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association. It was a departure from his sitcom roots, but Darius proved he could handle the challenge with ease. From there, he continued to mix it up with main cast roles in shows like Freedom in 2000 and Kingpin in 2003. These gigs proved Darius's ability to adapt to different genres and formats, whether it was drama or action-packed crime series. And let's not forget about his ventures into film during this time. He made his mark with appearances in Kingdom Come and 15 Minutes, adding some impressive cinematic milestones to his resume. But Darius wasn't content with just dominating the small screen. He also made a splash in the mid-2000s with a significant role in the main cast of the show Committed in 2005. This highlighted his ongoing commitment to taking on diverse and challenging roles. Plus, fans got a dose of nostalgia when he reunited with his Family Matters co-star Kelly Shanine Williams on UPN's show Eve in 2006. It was a heartwarming moment for fans of the iconic duo. Darius's vocal talents didn't go unnoticed either. He lent his voice to the character Jazz in the blockbuster Transformers in 2007, marking his notable venture into voice acting. He revealed visited this skill in 2009 with the character Terex in the film Bionicle, The Legend Reborn. And let's not forget his presence in mainstream cinema. With roles in films like Next Day Air and Saw 4 clearly, Darius had a knack for seamlessly transitioning
transitioning between genres and mediums. Beyond the screen, Darius also graced the stage in various theater productions, including the compelling The Maintenance Man. This further highlighted his commitment to diverse artistic expressions and cemented his status as a multifaceted talent in the entertainment industry. In 2009, Darius McCrary dipped his toes into the world of soap operas by snagging a spot on The Young and the Restless for a couple of seasons. He played Malcolm Winters, adding some drama to his already impressive resume. But by 2011, Darius was itching to explore his musical side, and he dropped his first album, giving fans a taste of his multifaceted artistic identity. Over the next few years, Darius kept his TV game strong with recurring roles in shows like Anger Management in 2012, The Leftovers in 2015, and Star in 2016. It was clear audiences couldn't get enough of him, no matter what show or genre he popped up in. Then, in 2018, he found a new TV home on the show Monogamy, adding another notch to his television portfolio. And let's not forget about his film gigs. In 2020, he showed up in True to the Game 2, and the following year, he reprised his role in True to the Game 3, proving he's still committed to the craft of acting. Now let's talk about love. It's been a wild ride for Darius. Back in 2005, he took a shot at marriage with Juliet Van, but things fizzled out pretty quickly, and they split in 2006. Love didn't seem to stick around for Darius in those early days, but he didn't give up hope. In 2009, he tied the knot with his longtime friend Kareen Steffens, but sadly they called it quits in 2011. It seemed like finding lasting love was a bit of a challenge for Darius, but hey, third time's the charm, right? In 2014, he walked down the aisle with Tammy Bronner, and they welcomed a beautiful daughter named Zoe into the world. They tackled parenthood together, building a strong family bond. However, even their efforts couldn't keep their love story on track, and they decided to go their separate ways in 2017, closing yet another chapter in Darius's romantic saga. So, Darius has definitely been through a lot, hasn't he? From UPS and Downs in his career to the roller coaster of love in his personal life. Let's hope he catches a break soon, right? What's your take on all this? Drop a comment below and we'll catch you in the next video.